Hello everyone. My Subaru has been making this whirring, grinding noise for quite a while. It's clearly coming from the rolling mechanisms of the chassis, and it changes volume and pitch with changes in speed. For clarity, I've amplified it here in editing. Sounds like it's coming from the rear end of the car, but it's hard to differentiate one side from the other. My best guess was the passenger side. That turned out to be right. It's been getting worse over time, so I know I'm driving on borrowed time. It sounds like the right rear at the moment, but I can't really pinpoint it. I already have new backing plates for the rear brakes. I've just been waiting for the right opportunity the to install them. Plate will hang on those four bolts. So I'll tear into it and see if I can find the failing rear wheel bearing or CV joint that's causing this ruckus. And I really hope it's not a differential bearing. So let's get to it. This video assumes you know how to remove the wheels, brake calipers, and brake rotors. Check out part 2 of my rear brake video if you'd like to see me doing that. I'll include a link in the description. So I pulled the wheel and the brake rotor on both sides. And you can see that the backing plate here is gone. It was totally rusted so I just pulled off what was left. I'm going to have to replace these backing plates. I already have the new ones. And as I rotate these rear wheel bearings, I don't feel anything wrong with them. I really don't feel anything wrong and, and I don't hear anything wrong. This would be a good time to put the wheels back on and see how much free play or chucking the bearings have in them. According to the manual, they should have less than two thousandths axial movement. That's in and out. But I have to disassemble this whole thing anyway because I have to remove the backing plates. Okay, now I've removed all the parking brake parts. Check out my Subaru parking brake video to see how that's done. So the end of this shaft has almost like a keyway in it. And this lock nut has this uh, ring that gets indented into the keyway. That prevents it from turning loose. So I'm just going to use this center punch to knock that ring out of the, the keyway slot, if I can. That should be it. This happens to be a Craftsman one and a quarter inch socket and that seems to fit perfectly. So I put a 24 inch pipe wrench handle on here to keep it from turning while I torque on this center nut, this axle nut. Put a pipe on my breaker bar to give me extra leverage. Those four bolts back there, there's two on this side, two on the other side. They are what hold the wheel bearing in, the wheel bearing hub assembly.
and those bolt heads take a 14 millimeter socket. That was easy. That bolt's actually in really good condition. I had to wait here for my air pressure to come back up. I couldn't get the impact wrench on this one, so it'll have to be done using a breaker bar. If you don't have an impact tool, they can all be done with a breaker bar. Need to get this wheel position sensor out. That's a 10 millimeter socket. It's plastic. I don't want to refine it too hard. I don't want to refine it at all. Yeah, that loosened it up. There. Nice. Wasn't too hard. Didn't do it any damage. That's good. Just got to soak this cable where it comes in to, through the backer plate. Just using penetrating fluid. 
help to loosen it up. The U-clip has to be removed in order to pull the emergency brake cable from the backer plate. You see it? There it goes. And I'll soak this down. With More penetrating fluid. So I'll let that soak. Well, when I did the other side, I just banged on this and it actually bent, the, bent out the back side of that, that tube that the cable goes through. Yeah, it's starting to pull out already, so... Not bad. That cable still perfectly usable. That just pops off with a pry bar. I wasn't completely sure these original high mileage CV joints weren't the problem. They're easy to remove when the hubs are out of the way. So I popped them out to look at them. I also wanted to check for any movement or roughness in the differential bearings. When I moved the axle shaft on one side, it couldn't be felt on the other side. That didn't cause any movement where it shouldn't. Well, the good news is I don't feel any movement in there. There doesn't seem to be any free play in the differential bearings. Okay. So it turned out I was wrong about these uh, CV joint axles. This is the inside end next to the pumpkin. That thing is just as smooth as butter and really quiet. There's nothing wrong with this at all. And on this end, it's pretty free, but I can feel some kind of resistance and grittiness in there. So I'm not going to reassemble this with these axles. They're both have, they both have the same problem. They're gritty and they're gritty and uh, kind of rough. They're free to turn. But they're not smooth. They're not. They're not silky smooth like the inner. The inner end here, that is smooth as silk. Just amazing. The end toward the uh, wheel bearing, definitely not as nice. Oh, it's it's pretty rough in there. So I'm going to replace both of them. This position sensor retaining bolt hole was a little bit rough, a little bit rusty. So I'm just going to chase it out with a tap. It's a metric tap. Size M6. 
1.0. So that's one, one thread per millimeter. I believe. And that that hole is all the way through. I can run the tap right through and it comes out the bottom. I cleaned the majority of the rust off the bearing hub mounting surfaces with a wire wheel on an old electric drill. This included the inside diameter of the center hole and of course the flat surfaces. It took 45 minutes per side to get the surfaces as clean and smooth as I wanted them. I won't bore you with all that footage, but I need to show you some of the extra work I had to do on the inside of the center hole. This is the first trial fitting of the center hole to its mounting pad. It didn't fit very well at all. It was way too tight in the center hole. It may have been able to be forced in with the bolts, but I'm never one to force fit bearings. That leads to a shortened lifespan. It really doesn't quite fit in there. There's a ridge of rust here on the inside in the middle. But I'm gonna have to work on I used the curved profile of a medium coarseness file to gradually knock down the rusted ridge inside the hub mounting hole. Yeah, there's a bunch of brown rust coming off of there. At this point, the gap is about the same as the thickness of the backer plate. So I'm satisfied with that. There's actually a little bit of chuck in this bearing. This is the wheel bearing hub from the right rear passenger side on the car. Just like I suspected earlier. And listen to this. So if I turn this bearing by hand very quickly, I can feel how rough the bearing is. But listen to this, we can easily hear it.
I'm sure that's the source of my noise. And I ordered the bearings anyway, the new hubs anyway, because I wasn't going to go to all the work of pulling these apart to replace the backing plates without replacing the wheel bearings while I was at it. So it turns out after all it's a bad wheel bearing. Just going to put a little bit of gear oil on the shaft here. and on the seal on the side of the differential housing. Putting a little gear oil on that seal. This bit of video was actually from the other side, but the procedure is the same. So it took a little bit of finagling, but I ended up reaching in here and lining up that CV joint to the uh, differential. And I slid it in there, and then I grabbed onto the axle back here and here and pushed it in until it was fully engaged, which I could feel it's, it's all the way in there now. And if I try to pull it out, there's resistance. That tells me it's, it's locked in. So now, so now I'm going to put a little bit of uh, never seize on these bolts. A little bit or a lot of bit. And the new backing plate will hang on those four bolts. I'm also going to put some never sees on the inside of that casting there where the base of that bearing hub inserts into the housing here or into this casting it's the suspension control arm I would also like to put never seize on the splines here on the end of the axle stub.
Okay, that one started. That first one I got in there a little bit too far, so now everything's crooked. Just need to get a couple threads started before I screw them in. So all four bolts are started and I just need to work them in and tighten them down. So I'll do that off camera. The four bearing hub bolts are ready to be tightened. I used a torque wrench to tighten them to 48 foot pounds. The next steps are to assemble the brakes and mount the wheel. This video assumes you know how to do that. Check out part 2 of my rear brake video if you'd like to see how that's done. Torque the wheel nuts to 89 foot-pounds. After everything else is done, and with the car on the ground, torque the axle nut in 3 steps. And don't forget to dent its retaining ring into the keyway. Thank you for watching. Please take a moment to like and subscribe.